Hi there. I'm Jarrell. Uh, like you guys, I'm just a normal human being. I'm not a YouTuber or anything like that. I run my own game studio for a living. Today I want to share with you some information on how to use Game Maker 8 to create your own PSP games. Now, if you've missed the video that explains how to obtain Game Maker 8 and Chovy GM, which is used to run your Game Maker games on PSP, I'll put the link in the description and the comment section and you can get caught up on how to install Game Maker 8 and Chovy GM so that you can create your own PSP games. These are games that run on PSP hardware and on emulators. So today I'll be showing you the most important basics on getting started and using Game Maker uh, 8 for PSP and how it's different from just making an ordinary Windows game. So the absolute most important thing is to take into account the resolution of the PSP because Game Maker was not designed specifically to create PSP games. It was designed for Windows games. So when you are using Game Maker 8 to create a PSP game, you must absolutely always take into account that you are uh, creating a game for a specific screen size, and that needs to come through in all of uh, your decisions in terms of designing the game itself. Uh, there are a few features that do not work, so I will be describing the ones that I have found myself so that you can avoid some trouble as well. First, I'm just going to create a placeholder object here, and I'm going to name that player. Uh, it doesn't need any logic right now. And then we are going to create a room. By default, the room size will be 640 by 480, but the PSP's resolution is significantly smaller than that. You must always take into account uh, and adjust your room sizes to fit the PSP screen, or you're going to have a bad time. So, when you go to the settings of your room, you want to put in 480 by 272. And that is the easiest way to then now design your room to fit the PSP. This is what I would do to create a splash screen, a title, or a menu screen. Now you may be wondering, what if you want to create a bigger room and you want to have the camera follow a character around? Well, I'll show that to you next. So... What you want to do is make your room bigger. So let's say you want to have a 1000 by 1000 room. You can now populate this with whatever details and visuals you like. Your trees, your houses, your buildings, monsters. And now you want to go to views. You want to enable the use of views. Now in previous versions of Game Maker, having that enabled actually caused a performance hit. Uh, clear background with window color. So in the past, I would always disable that. I have not personally done any benchmarking on the PSP to see if that actually affects performance on the PSP, but I always uh, untick that anyway because there isn't really a reason to have it on. Um, you can look into that further if you like. So, let's see if we change that. You should start seeing something here. Really what's important here is, oh, um, if you, when you want visible when the room starts, and you can now see the effect of having that uh, viewport. So this is a viewport. That's the port on the screen. Let's see if we just put uh, 482, 72. We don't really see anything else there. What's important is this. the You select the object that the camera will follow. Now the borders define how close the player can get to the edge before the camera moves. So 32 by 32 means the character would need to go right up against the edge. So if you look at our resolution 480, you do not want to do half. And the reason why is because that will actually cause the screen to jitter a significant amount, um, especially based on the size of your player sprite. So it's up to you for your game to determine what works best. Maybe something like 200 would work. That leaves 80 pixels in the middle for your character to move uh, before the screen wobbles a bit. Uh, if you want the character to be able to move around without moving the camera immediately, you can have a value like 150, which means they have to be 150 pixels close to the edge before the screen moves. Um, that is significantly shorter. Maybe we'll do something like 80. Okay, and I wonder if we can just create some default stuff here. Uh, I don't have anything to load in, so uh, let's see here. Now, if we hit OK, let's save it. I'll just put that as a test. Test. 
And if we run it, let's see what happens. If our viewport is set up correctly, then it should run at the correct resolution, which is 480 by 272. And I'll bring that up onto the screen. You can see that is the correct size for the PSP. If you do not do that viewport, you're going to have significant issues on the PSP. Okay, let's go to our next step. Now, what does not work are 3D functions. GameMaker has D3D functionality. It can do basic 3D games, but that does not work properly on the PSP. You can try, certainly go for your life, have all the fun that you want. Uh, I've tried, uh, I've explored every uh, avenue for 3D on uh, GameMaker for the PSP, and that you can get some things to kind of work, but the, resolu uh, the performance is so bad, like one frame a second, you know, or worse than that. So there isn't a point to it, but there is a way to create 3D games for the PSP using a modern game engine, which I will cover in a future video. So if you're interested in that, go please go ahead and you can subscribe and like and, and uh, hit the notification bell if you'd like that. Also, what does not work is passing arguments to scripts. This is a very big deal. Let's go ahead and create a script, okay? And let's just say, do some, I don't know, do some math, okay? And let's say we want to return uh, argument zero plus argument one. Okay, so normally what that will let you do is access this script from somewhere else. My access, where do I do my scripts here? Let's see, execute a script. Uh, we'll go create. So when the object is created, we will access a script and we will say do some math and we'll say uh, one plus two. And so that should give us three. That should return three. But the problem is argument passing does not work on GameMaker for the PSP. It works fine if you're just making a GameMaker game for Windows, but on the PSP, this will not work. It will not actually receive those. Uh, there are major problems. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so I think it has to do with Chovy GM, which allows you to port your GameMaker games. Uh, the problem lies there. So what you're going to have to do is this. So let's just say global variables. I'll show you how to use global variables, right? And if you're ever unsure on how to do something, the best way is to just Google it. So I'll go ahead and bring up a Google here, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and go open up a brand new Google. I've opened a Google, and you want to type in Game Maker 8, and you put those in quotation marks, so Google explicitly looks for things related to Game Maker 8. Someone mentioned in a previous video, you can go minus, uh, and you can remove Studio, because if you don't do the quotations Game Maker 8, you will get results related to the modern version of Game Maker, which is totally different. You can do that to help. They said people asked if you could do that instead of putting Game Maker 8, but there are other older versions of Game Maker, so doing minus Studio helps, but it's not as good as just putting Game Maker 8 in quotations. Let's see how to use global variables. So anytime you have a question on how to do something with Game Maker 8, you can comment in some of my videos related to PSP development, or you can search Google yourself. Um, I checked this earlier. This would provide a sufficient answer. I would highly recommend putting a bookmark on this particular page here. You can see that it shows you an example here on how to use global variables. So let's go ahead and set up my global variables. I'll just say global uh, dot currency main is equal to zero. Now you don't need to put that at the end. I, I generally work in C, so I'm accustomed to putting uh, the uh, semicolon in there, but it's uh, not necessary here. Okay, and you could say global dot um, Let's see, uh, obtain currency main, okay, is equal to zero. Uh, and now we'll just have to remember what we put in there. I like to copy and paste if I know I'm going to use some code here. This is just a shortcut here. So let's say now, okay, we'll create a script. 
uh, let's say, and this is going to be give, give player money. Okay, and now we can say uh, global um, dot currency main is equal to global dot currency main plus obtain currency main. There we go. Now it's a little bit clunky, um, and that's because we can't pass uh, arguments. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just execute a piece of code and I can say obtain currency main is equal to 10. And then, you know, you can run a script give player money. And you can put any other logic. The reason why you wouldn't just take that and copy and paste it and then run it in the script is that you want as much of your code to be reusable as possible. And so you can put other logic in here, you know, like display something on the screen, whatever logic, um, play a sound effect, uh, whatever you want to do in there. So uh, there we go. Uh, that's how you can avoid using arguments. So that's getting started. And lastly, I want to quickly explain inputs. And that's really the last most important part here. So ChovyGM, again, in the previous video, go ahead and have a look at that. Go ahead and run ChovyGM, and it will show you what the equivalent buttons are. So anything that you define for X will be circle. Anything you define for Z or Z will be cross. Square will be A. So if I go ahead and create this, I go key press letters and X. Any logic I put in here will be related to the PSP controls. I'll go ahead and open that again. Show me again. So anything that I put in the logic of X will occur when I press the circle button on the PSP. You can see that virtual keyboard left up right down is for movement and that is very simple and I'll just show you very briefly some uh, people have haven't used Game Maker 8 before, so I'll just show you some brief examples. Key press only occurs the very frame that you push the key down. So if you want to be held down, then you want to use keyboard. We'll go left, right, up, and down. And there are many different ways that you can implement this. You can move a fixed amount, or you can set some velocity here. So for uh, this situation, I'll just say that vertical speed is uh, 5. I can control C and control V just to save myself some drag and dropping. Okay, and we'll go negative 5 for up. See, I don't want vertical, I now want horizontal speed. Uh, we can see five. Oh, that should be, that should be negative five. But there's many different ways to implement movement. I'm showing you just the most basic way to implement movement in your game. And there we go. But it's up to you to determine the best way to implement. Now, what happens when you let go of the keys? I can share more examples with you if you'd like to see uh, more elegant solutions to all of this, having adjustable speed from picking up power-ups. So that's all I want to share with you today. I hope that was all useful to you. That is what you need to get started making PSP games. That's some things to keep in mind. If I find any more information about features that do not work or that do work, then I'll definitely share them with you. But you um, should just experiment and try and have fun enjoy what you're doing and hey if you make something neat please feel free to share it in the comment section i have a discord if you want to share your projects there i'm currently running a kickstarter campaign for uh, one of my upcoming games silver falls face takers if you're interested in supporting me if you'd like to help my channel and help me uh, get my next game funded then please uh, feel free to check out the kickstarter i'll put the link in the description below okay and again everyone i'm not a big fancy YouTuber. I'm not a fancy internet man. I'm just a normal human being just like you. Um, and so, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, if there's any other platforms that you would like to see um, some information on how to create homebrew for, then please let me know. Uh, 
It's been so great being able to share all of this with you, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you next time. I just wanted to take this moment to thank my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, because of you, I've been able to keep the lights on in the studio, especially when uh, sales are a bit slow in between my releases because it takes so long to make commercial titles. Um, there are moments where uh, I just have very low sales, and the Patreon does really help me keep the studio going, so I really appreciate that. If you like um, the content that I'm creating in terms of uh, sharing information about uh, creating homebrew games for uh, legacy consoles, and you'd like to see more of that, uh, you can contribute to that with the Patreon, and if you would like me to make more homebrew games more frequently, then uh, the Patreon does help with that as well. So I recently obtained a Game Gear and some hardware so I can create games for the Game Gear, and uh, we are currently working towards obtaining a Sega Saturn so I can create Sega Saturn homebrew games. So again, thank you so much to all the Patreons here in the past and present. I appreciate all of you. Take care of yourselves, everyone, and... Um, Tell your mom I said thanks. Bye.